Welcome back to Market to Market. The Arthur Lockta Graduate School of Business, in collaboration with the Ministry of Labor and Small and Micro Enterprise Development, will be hosting a business showcase for entrepreneurs at the Hyatt Regency Trinidad from May 27th to 29th. This week, we chat with Lockjack GSB's Executive Director, Professor Miguel Carigio, and entrepreneur and fashion designer Claudia Pegas. Professor, what is the goal of the showcase? You know, uh, entrepreneur, it's a French word, actually, which you know, means uh, to emprunt, which means to start something. Uh, but if you go, Chris Elena, you ask, any entrepreneur, what's more difficult, to start or to grow? 99.9% .9 of the time, they will say to grow. So one of the most important uh, objectives with this showcase is to give attendance to the actual workshops a growth platform. You know, tell them, look, these are the fundamentals that you have to cover in order to think about growing your business. Um, so that's the, the second, the second um, uh, objective. And the third is to turn entrepreneurs into agents of change. You know, there are two kinds of entrepreneurs, I think. The entrepreneur that is uh, willing to live a very relaxed, comfortable life. You know, he or she is starting a business. Not not for really create jobs or, or growth, but really it's so much more what I call self-employment, uh, which means, you know, I want to create a, uh, um, a company where, where it will give me a comfortable life, I will have enough money to pay my bills and live relaxed. But then you have what I call the real entrepreneurs, which are people that, are, uh, that really want to make a difference, that uh, their intention is actually not to be comfortable, uh, and actually trying to create value, not just for them, not to monetize uh, you know, or, or create wealth for themselves, but really and truly have a bigger uh, vision, uh, not just to change their lives for themselves and for their families, but as well for the communities and for the society in general. So I call it the no growth entrepreneur or self employment entrepreneur, and then I call it the growth entrepreneur. This is for growth entrepreneurs. So what we want them to show them that if we really, this country, we want this country to, to grow. It's not going to be based on what the public sector could do, it's going to be based on what entrepreneurs could do. So we want them to show, we want to show them that entrepreneurship is more about opening and growing a business, but as well as becoming relevant and having a positive impact in society. And that's it. So what can they expect at the business showcase? Um, well, I think that the most important aspect of the showcase is to be inspired. You know, uh, to understand that um, you don't have to be a to, to kind of create a sophisticated product. You know, you don't have to uh, uh, basically create a concept that doesn't exist. There are so many ways that you can create value. You know, can you think about, for instance, making money out of selling bottled water? You know, what's bottled? There is no secret about bottled water, but then you have an entrepreneur like Dominique Hadid that is commanding, you know, a huge share of the market. Uh, then you have another entrepreneur within the same beverage sector that is commanding a very important market share in the form of uh, Dr. Ali Mohammed and uh, Fruta uh, and so on and so forth. So even with simple products, you can actually make a big difference as long as, for instance, you are able to create a brand and, uh, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So it's really about inspiration. The other aspect that you can actually um, would like to kind of expect is validation. What I mean by validation is, you know, 
once you go, you, you, you get your business model, your business idea exposed to the public, exposed to experts or to other, uh, or to the actual lecturers, you know, it's a way to validate how strong is your value proposition, how strong is your idea. You know, what are the chances for my idea, not just to succeed in the short term, but what is the growth potential that we have, you know, locally and globally. You know? So the first uh, expectation that we hope we should cover is, is inspiration, second validation, and third connection or networking. How do you feel about government's thrust towards promoting entrepreneurship and SMEs in this country? Okay, um, okay from, from where I sit, I think um, let's, let us deal specifically with the fashion industry and what the government is doing there. Now, the School of Fashion and Design started about four years ago, and my hope was that the school would work in conjunction with industry and the, the students would be asked to do a mandatory internship um, you know, with industry as they proceed with their, um, with their studies. My hope was that doing that, they would have an understanding of the need of the local industry. They would be able to marry that with the technology and uh, the new ideas and concepts that they're learning in the school. And after they've graduated, that um, mandatory requirement should continue for a little while where they would have to go back into the industry and specifically um, to the developed fashion designers, the designers who are established, and create, you know, bring all that skill in to create houses. Um, I am not one for several little businesses in the fashion industry. I, for me, I think that if you take the three top fashion designers in Trinidad, and if I had the potential to do something, what I would do would be to take all the first crop of students and feed them into those three houses, build those houses, so that you have, let us say, for instance, you have Claudia Pegas, which is an established name. I would then take in about 10 young designers. One would be designing shoes, one would be doing handbags, one would be doing um, career apparel, one would be doing evening wear, and different things. So what you do is you expand the house. That way you can then begin to start thinking about competing on a global scale. But you can't have a small entrepreneur, you can't be putting money behind a small entrepreneur, expecting that small entrepreneur to go to an international trade shoe or something like that and compete effectively. You can't, it's exactly as the professor was saying, you know, the, the giants are going to eat you up. And so to me, like in the fashion industry, I see a lot of room for expansion. And um, with all the initiatives that the government is doing, for instance, there is the Fashion Industry Development Committee, and I, I sit on that committee. And there are several other committees, you know, that have started up to assist the industry to grow. But again, you know, it's, it's how you pump the money, where you pump the money, and how you develop the industry. Because you have to be realistic. You know, the, our competitors are not each other. Our competitors are all the big names that are coming into Trinidad. Example, we have Zara in Trinidad. We have Nine West in Trinidad. Those are our competitors. My competitors are not the people who are producing locally because the foreigners who are coming in, they are also competing for a share of the market, the, the same market that I'm competing for. So in order for me to compete effectively, I have to, I, I have to scale my, my team and my business alongside you know, their, their management structure, their scales and so on, so that I can compete. I can't compete, let us say for instance, I'm a designer, I can't compete with Zara if all I'm doing is doing couture stuff, because Zara is doing couture, ready wear, resort, career apparel, you know, and, and for me, that is the direction, you know, that we need to, to take. And I think that is where the government bodies need to start looking at developing, you know, the designers who've already done the groundwork and whose brands have sufficient goodwill 
that you can pump money behind and the risk is is not as um the risk is is not as strong as, as if you take someone um who's now starting out a school and and they now building a business without any brand equity governments in general in general are not good at creating wealth and that's not their purpose their purpose is mostly to distribute wealth and to create an enabling environment for firms to grow okay and i think that um, there are several initiatives put in place uh, to actually increase uh, and improve the uh, the easiness of, of, of doing business. However, let's just be very honest. A good entrepreneur will be able to tackle any obstacles or any um, basically barriers that she or he could encounter so he can make things happen. Okay? Um, I think that it's time for entrepreneurs to step up and stop blaming the government or blaming the orbit of, of, of the moon, okay? Excuses we will always find. Government will always have a role to play, will always have you know, uh, opportunities to improve the environment. Are you partnering with any other organizations for the Business Showcase? Yes, um, interesting enough, and talking about what the government is doing, uh, we have a beautiful partnership with the Ministry of, of Labor through I IBIS. Uh, they are uh, supporting this initiative, they are part of this initiative, and, and for me it's fascinating to find out a Minister of Labor who's actually promoting entrepreneurship. I, I think that's quite a revolutionary because yes. one of the things that I found out is revolutionary is what they're really trying to push is, you know, pushing employees Productivity. to become entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right from the Minister of Labor. Never seen that in other countries. Usually that is, in, those are initiatives that happen in ministries of economy or trade and investment. But I think that's, uh, that's uh, sorry, quite cool, actually. So I, I think that we're very happy to have them on board. And, uh, and I think that uh, they, they do understand the value of bringing a school of business to teach how to do business. You know, something that it might sound very, very logic, but hardly is actually done. You know, uh, very, very few times you will find out that a government and the Minister of Labor actually partners with the school of business. Business, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? So, yeah. Claudia, you're participating in the showcase. Mm -hmm. What do you expect to gain from it? Um, one exposure to networking. Um, I am. I'm always looking to network. Um, I'm looking to meet other um, business partners who can expand my product. Um, who can I? Who I can create strategic alliances with? Um, perhaps companies that are doing things like IT, branding, uh, manufacturers, so that I can expand the Claudia Pegas brand you know, the product, the reach. So for me, very much 90% of it would be um, networking, exposure. I think when a lot of us are interviewing prospective employees, we try to ask them proper questions. We try to find out what skills do they have? What do they think about this? What do they think about that? But the problem is, these days, a lot of people rehearse their answers. They know the kind of questions they want to get in interviews, and so they have an official answer for it. Thank you.